Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Shalom, brothers and sisters. First of all, we want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Peace, mercy, and blessings to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Uh, today, we're going to continue on with the eternal judgment lesson. Uh, this time, we're going to go into destroy both soul and body in hell, uh, which is basically another aspect of the eternal judgment. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on. And we're going to read Daniel chapter 12, starting at verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth up for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So we see here that upon the return of our Lord and the deliverance, uh, which this one talks about the Ar Michael the Archangel showing up in the time of trouble. And of course, we know according to other precepts uh, throughout the scriptures that Yahweh Shai is going to come with the heavenly hosts to deliver his elect from the four corners of the earth. Then judgment day will be set. And those that were found written in the book of life they will be delivered and receive everlasting life and those that were not delivered or those that did believe not they will receive shame and everlasting contempt so that shame and everlasting contempt is basically coming from them not being able to repent them not having the gospel on the other side and that's part of the shame that they will feel forever according to the scriptures okay. this is Jeremiah 20 verse 8 for since I spake I cried out I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay for I heard the defaming of many fear on every side report, say they. And we will report it. All my familiars watch for my halting, saying, Peradventure, he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. So this precepts with the Daniel 12 and one to show that that everlasting shame and contempt is pertaining unto those who did not receive the gospel because Jeremiah was speaking to those Israelites. These are Israelites in which he's speaking to. Now we're gonna go here to Matthew eight, starting at the 11 verse. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Again, this is red letter coming from Yahweh Shai for those who would not embrace the gospel. That repercussion or that punishment will be that everlasting shame and contempt and weeping and gnashing of teeth. Right. And part of that everlasting shame and contempt also comes with um, <clears throat> a body, which is a vile body, which is also referred to in the scriptures as a, a vile carcass. This is wisdom of Solomon, chapter four, verse 17. For they shall see the end of the wise and shall not understand what God in his counsel has decreed of him and to what end the Lord has set him in safety. They, sh they shall see him and despise him, but God shall laugh them to scorn, and they shall hereafter be a vile carcass and a reproach among the dead forevermore. For he shall rend them and cast them down headlong, that they shall be speechless, 
and he shall shake them from the foundation, and they shall be utterly laid waste, and be in sorrow, and their memorial shall perish. And, and when they cast up the accounts of their sins, they shall come with fear, and their own iniquities shall convince them to their face. So with that shame and contempt also, it's going to come uh, with those vile carcasses and those bodies, which is going to be an everlasting thing that's going to be happening to them. And I got a precept to that with um, Isaiah 66, starting with verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. And they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. So this is going to be an everlasting, also like an everlasting reoccurring thing that's going to happen to these people that um, that doesn't know the Most High and His Son. This is Mark chapter 9 and verse 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter it halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out, for it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Where their worm dieth not, and their fire is not quenched. So we see here that Yahweh Shai, this is red letter, saying that the fire is not quenched, the worm dieth not, and basically giving a strict warning that even it's better for one to lose a body part and come in, into the kingdom than to have their whole body and to be cast into hellfire, which we know according to the blue letter, that word there is Gehenna. Right. Right. All right, so hopefully this is edifying, and we want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai. Peace, blessings, and mercy to the hopeful elect. Shalom. Shalom. Yahweh Shai saith unto them, Have ye understood all these things? They say unto him, Yea, Lord. <laughs>